Hi, I'm Mark from Trading the Market. This video is the third installment of the Greyhound Trading Series, and in this video we'll be looking at all things bell curves to predict the race outcomes. You will see some screens in this video that are currently in development and are not yet available, but will be on Sports IQ in the near future. Now, if you're a member of the Discord, you would have seen the work that Bob Bet has been doing with bell curves explaining how to use them. I'm going to show you how to use bell curves to pick winning dogs. I'll start with what is a bell curve? A bell curve, also known as normal distribution, is a statistical graph that represents the distribution of a set of data. The curve is symmetrical and shaped like a bell, which is where it gets its name. It is one of the most common probability distributions in statistics and is used to model many natural phenomena. Showing you an example on the screen of a bell curve, to make it easy for you to understand, we're going to be looking at height of males in the UK. The bottom of the graph from left to right is height in feet, starting with the left at 5.15 feet, then going all the way to the right, which is 6.65 feet. The red dotted line down the center of the graph represents the mean height of men in the UK. You might be surprised that the average height of a man in the UK is 5.9 feet. The blue line is the probability density, which shows how the data is distributed across the range of heights. So the higher the blue line, the more likely it is men to have that height or near that value. To get the bell curve, we need to know what the standard deviation is. I won't explain how to work out the standard deviation as I've done this in enough videos and you can watch one of them. The standard deviation of this graph is 0.25 feet or quarter of a foot. Now to understand the blue line of probability density, we'll apply standard deviation to it and we'll explain how likely something is to happen. From the center line of 5.9 feet, we can apply the standard deviation of 0.25 feet to show that within one deviation, the height range goes from 5.65 feet to 6.15 feet. Due to how the mass works, it is a set percentage of people who fall within this standard deviation. The amount of men that will fall within this is 68%. So 68% of all men in the UK range from 5.65 feet to 6.15 feet. As this is a curve, we know that half of the 68% of the men, so 34, will fall between the average height of 5.9 feet and 6.15 feet and the other 34% of men are between 5.65 feet and the average height of 5.9 feet. If we go two standard deviations away from the average, we'll now have a range of 5.4 feet and 6.4 feet. Two standard deviations from the mean line now includes 95% of all men in the UK. 47.5% of the men will be above the average and 47.5% of men will be under the average. We now go to the extreme end of the bell curve to three standard deviations from the mean and we have the range of 5.15 feet to 6.65 feet and this will include 99.7% of the population of men in the UK. This means if you're under 5.15 feet or over 6.65 feet you're in 0.15% of the population of the UK either side. Now we understand what the bell curve is showing us we can now apply it to the greyhounds. On the screen is a bell curve for a real greyhound race that is due to run. Rather than the heights at the bottom of the graph, we have the speed of the race completed. To make it simple, I'm going to remove everything but dog 3 and 6, and then we'll have the others back in later once I've explained this. As we can see from the white bell curve of dog 3, that 99.7% of its results at this distance fall into this time range. And from the green curve, we can see that 99.7% of its races fall in this time range. As the green curve is further over to the right, we can see that the dog is normally run slower time than dog 3. In this case, we'd expect dog 3 to beat dog 6. We will now add in dog 2. We know the center of the curve is the mean average time, and dog 2 is the slowest of the three averages. The curve is spread across most of the graph, and we know at the end of the curve is three standard deviations away. The overlapping blue line across the white will only happen 2.35% of the time, we're able to work this out because we know that two standard deviations will cover 95% of the race outcomes and three standard deviations covers 99.7%. The difference between 95% and 99.7% is 4.7% and because we're only looking at the bottom end of the graph we divide that by 2 so this gives us 2.35%. The bell curve is telling us that dog 2 will only have a very small percentage chance of beating dog 3. Let's add all the dogs back in using the same principles we can see that dog 3 is still the strongest dog with pretty much its entire curve being in the quicker part of the graph. This bell curve tells us the other dogs would have to run a race of its life, or one of them sacrificially bump into dog free in order for the outcome not to happen. Let's take a look at the race in action.
It looks like none of the dogs had the race of their lives and Dog3 takes it home. Put simply, that is how we use bell curves to profile dog races. Now I said I'd show you how to see if a dog gets bulked or trapped or knocked on a race or crowded. Well that's easy to do. I currently look on time form of the race I want to trade and then click the history of the dog. I'm looking at the bend stats and this is going to tell you what position the dog was in on each bend. We're going to look how often a dog drops two places on a bend. In this example the dog on the screen is a greyhound by the name of South Down Trixie. If we look at four races ago, the race on the 26th and the 9th, 24, we can see that the dog was in first place on Ben 1, and then by Ben 2 it dropped down to 6. If we hover over the date, we see it was badly bulked. You don't need to read every race report to see how the dog performed, the truth is in the numbers. If we look at the race on the 21st to the 7th, 24, we can see that on Ben 1 it went from 1st to 5th, and again we check the race report, we can see it was bulked and fell. On the opposite side of this, we can look at the dogs that run past the trouble. If a dog goes from 4th to 2nd, it's likely that something happened and the dog ran past it. Using the numbers from the last bend to its finishing position, we can tell if the dog pushed on towards the end of the race. I put a bend graph on the screen of the dog for, for my example. It's just looking at the last 8 races and we can see from the bottom of the graph, the line on the chart indicates the position it was in on each bend, bend 1, 2, 3 and 4, and the 5th is the position it finished in. As we can see from this graph, it's not won a race in the last eight, and we can also see that when it's led on Ben 1, it's never kept position. Well, I hope you enjoyed part three of the Greyhound trading series. There are many more parts to come, and I hope you get lots of use out of this video. So until next time, happy trading.